of some questions. Friend at the back there. Yeah, I'm Jodie Smith. I'm one of the politicians you don't like. And I think that is the worst thing you can do, is keep having a go at politicians. Because they switch on. And that's what's happened with many politicians. They're not listening to you because you're nasty to them. I went on the first, um, I was picketing on the gates of Aldermaster in 1958. There was a caravan in a field. Pat Arrowsmith was there. Mm -hmm. It was my first Quaker meeting that I ever went to. I went there on a bike with my brother. I've been in CND as long as I can, ever since. So I believe in the ethics and what you do. I've also got myself into a bit of trouble. I've been a councillor now since 1985. I broke the whip. I was a cabinet member who broke the whip, and they said cabinet members never do that in the Labour Party in Bristol. Because of my religion, because of my beliefs, because I didn't agree with war. And I did that personally. I, I was expected to be uh, thrown out of the party. In fact, I had to go to a full inquiry. I was clever. I got myself a nice solicitor sitting in the room with me. And actually, one of the people on the inquiry board was a barrister. And he said, I've had Quakers before. He said, you'll never change her. <laughs> now, I went then from being a cabinet member to a backbencher. I expected not to be reselected. But there are other things that I agreed with that the Labour Party does. What I am arguing with you is, come and join St. Gamera. We need you. We have a really bad time sometimes. We are alone in rooms arguing back. We are being practical. We are not losing our temper. We are putting the sense in there. And I'm doing that with my grandsons and, and my family. I always do that. So I would appeal to you. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I feel some of you can polish your halos forever you like, not <laughs> being a politician. But becoming a politician, and trying to hang on to the principles that my father and my grandfather had before me are the most important things I have. Can I say that if we want to get rid of Trident, it's what we've got to do. We've got to go through to the Labour Party and actually say so. But it's so much better if you're standing in a room with us and we are not alone. Some of us have learned what loneliness and keeping our principles which I think you've actually done as well. You know that feeling. When you're talking and saying things that you know most of the people around you don't agree with, but you think morally they are right. So, okay, there are good and bad politicians. We are not all bad. We are all individuals, and some of us are really peculiar eccentrics, okay? <laughs> certainly are qualified uh, to contribute to some of the policies <clears throat> that take place and which affect them. And I think that if we, if we did some of that in our schools, um, 
it would, uh, it would show them by actual experience uh, that if you involve yourself, you can make a difference. And then when these people come into adult society, they've already got that experience behind them. And I think, I think that's very important. Just as an answer to the young person there, I've done um, paraphrase that very old um, saying that the, uh, um, the way to ensure that evil flourishes is for good people to do nothing. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Um, Andrew? Yeah, there's certainly a, a, a lot of education to be done and young people are our future. I mean, we have to... My daughter is... Um, 18, 19, now all my children have been involved in, in the anti-war movement and I'm very proud of that. But the first thing that she came out about, my, my youngest daughter, was over the getting rid of the EMA, which was uh, the, the, the small grants that, that many teenagers, teenagers get. But I thought we saw then, in 2010, in those big uh, protests, student protests in central London, that young people do care. You know, they did come out in their in their tens of thousands and, and, and protest. So I have I have every hope that 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 young people will will take up the cudgel, take up the struggle. You know, actually, you know, we, we can't we can't live forever. You know, and, I, and we need a generation to come after us. I do appreciate what 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 uh, the lady at the back said about not being horrible to good politicians. We've had to be very, we have to be much, much nicer to, to good politicians, but we have to be clear about what the politicians are, that, that are in Parliament are actually doing. You know, I mean, when, uh, when we had this workfare judgment, which was, I think, the week before last, and there was a possibility of, of workfare being rejected, the Labour Party did abstain at that point, you know, and I, and I think that was wrong, and I'm sure you think it was wrong, but there were 52 Labour MPs who didn't abstain, you know, John McDonnell, Jeremy Corbyn, Diane Abbott, we can name them, we, that's, that's the problem, these are, these are our friends, these are our colleagues, these are the people that we work with, we are never, you know, these are the people that you will see on every demonstration. <coughs> on every anti-nuclear demonstration, at Aldermaston, you know, who was the MP there yesterday? It was Jeremy Corbyn. You know, who is on the anti-war marches? It is Jeremy Corbyn, it is Diane Abbott. These are, they are very few. And what I can't understand, and what we have to begin to think about is, how come, if we are so many, if 80% of people eventually were against the Iraq war, why did that not find a reflection in Parliament? Why were not 80% of our MPs not against the Iraq war? Why, were, why was it somehow reversed? That's, I think, a problem. You know, I can't resolve that problem, but I mean, I think it's a problem that we have to think about. You know. Thank you. Um, I can't answer. I don't know. I don't know why more MPs, Labour MPs, didn't vote against workfare. I don't know. And I'm, I'm new to being a parliamentary candidate, so some things are still new to me. My principles are not new to me, so I do know that every tiny bit of me, since I was a very, very small child, is opposed to nuclear weapons. And that I think there's lots and lots of ways, and I think Jenny's right to say it's, it's quite lonely being the only person in the room sometimes who has a particular view, but that's not my experience of an awful lot of people who are involved in politics, small p. And I think politics, small p, is what interests me. It's party politics is part of that, but it's not the only part of it. This is politics. And I would agree with, with Jenny um, when she says that it's, 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 it's more possible to do the things that you want to achieve for the principles that you believe in if there are people who are saying, yes, we'll stick with you. And I think it's a lonely life sometimes to feel like you were fighting for all these principles and suddenly when you're put in a difficult position and you look behind you, everyone's run away. 
I think I'm brave enough to do that, but the reason I said I couldn't promise you what would happen is because I also want to achieve lots of other things as well for those poor families who are living in that block of flats next door. <coughs> so as a parliamentary candidate rather than an MP, I don't know yet, Andrew, how it's going to work out. But I do know that I'm opposed to war, I was brought up a pacifist, and that I was brought up to believe in nuclear disarmament, and I still have all of those principles running through me. And that what I most want to be part of achieving, and what I hope will be a Labour government, is an end to poverty. Now, I believe that the best way for me to do that as a Labour politician is to convince the party that I'm standing for that they shouldn't be putting a Trident vote to the MPs in the first place. That we should go into the next general election, and I'll see a lot of support for that in the Labour Party, and I'm not trying to make this a Labour Party broadcast, it's just that it's come up. I think there's a lot of support for that in the Labour Party in the membership. And so, again, I would say, if you, as members or non-members or haters of the Labour Party, I'm not trying to get your votes, but if you want the Labour Party to go into the next general election and give potential MPs like me and existing MPs like Jeremy the backing that they need, because we're not all necessarily going to be able to do it in the way that Jeremy did and does, it's important that you say so to the Labour Party, because I think the Labour Party needs to hear that there are really, there's not really any support for going into the next general election saying that we're not going to, not saying that we're not going to start driving until we know this enough, I guess. <laughs> um, and I know that might sound like slightly passing the buck, but I'd say to the young person, I, you didn't say your name, but um, so the, to you, I would say, I got into being involved in politics, small p, and not party politics, when I was probably your age. And that was important to me. I was a Labour Party member as well, but it was less important to me than being a member of the CND <coughs> and being a Quaker and being a pacifist. And I think that there's probably things that every single one of your friends really cares about. And I think one of the things we can do is say to each other, you don't have to be a member of a political party to be political. I know I'm not supposed to say that. Um, but I don't think you do. I think you can be political by being um, a member of CND or volunteering at Oxfam or just going on a demonstration when it's something you believe in. And discovering for yourself that actually, when we do do things, as Tom said earlier, when we do things together, we're really quite strong. Um, we were both involved, well, Badica and the Labour Party both involved in a bedroom tax protest a few weeks ago. We got a lot of support, people showed their hate to the tax, and on the Monday, our mayor had to say, OK, I won't evict anybody. It was a small victory, but I don't think he'd have done it if we hadn't stood on his doorstep. So that's what I'd say to pass on to your friends, is you don't have to be a member of a political party, although I'd like to be. <laughs> you can, you, there are other ways of being political, and everything you do in life is political from your choice about which, which, what to buy in the shops, or not to buy anything mm -hmm. in the shops. It's a political decision. Mm -hmm. And we give politics a dirty name when we see it as just to do with party politics. Because it isn't. It's, it's also to do with how are you getting home tonight? Is there a safe bus? Are you likely to be assaulted on your way home? Is someone going to harass you in the streets? Are you going to be able to get a job tomorrow morning or next week? That's all political. Okay. It's still no jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>